a different type of southpaw than we're seeing right now in McClendon. And McClendon got his boxing skills together and pushed him left back. He started to get to him. Chambe is that kind of fighter. Chambe. Chambe is too much for this guy right now. Too much. And that's a year down the line. Right, year down the line might be different. Not now. Let talked about that he's improved since he fought Sean Bay. Well, guess what? So has Sean Bay Mitchell. Yeah. I've seen him. I've watched him. I've been a fan for years. And that young man can fight. Pull him on back. Pull him back. Sean Bay just back. keeps getting better and better. Keep him up. Keep him up. Final seconds of round seven. It's scheduled for 12 for the IBF on, Junior Welterweight Championship. Time. Coming up on Saturday, August 7th on pay-per-view, Francois Botha meets Shannon Briggs in a career crossroads fight for both. We caught up with them. Here's what they had to say. It's a heavyweight showdown. Former champion Francois Botha must prove that he's worthy to fight for the title, but standing in his way is Shannon Briggs. Briggs is touted as the most talented heavyweight in boxing, but to live up to expectations, he must defeat Botha. Plus, Marco Antonio Barrera defends his title against Pastor Maureen. On top of all this action, you'll see one more great fight. Botha versus Briggs, Saturday, August 7th, live on pay-per-view from Trump Taj Mahal. Call your cable or satellite company. Francois Botha, Shannon Briggs, each trying to get to that next level Saturday, August 7th from Atlantic City on pay-per-view. Either one stands a chance of getting in with Tyson, and that's big bucks. Round eight. The holy. Come on. Let him go. Let him go. Punch to get out. See, once again, five, six shots from Alec to two punches from McClendon. You just can't, you can't work that way. He has got to get past that back, jab and work. Step back, step back. This fight has now uh, hit somewhat of a low after a lot of action in the earlier rounds. Ooh, nice right here. Uh, well, be because uh, uh, he's just, Virgil has no idea of how to get past all this work that's happening in front of him. He can't, he, it hasn't on, turned over his mind. He's got to be on, as active in right, order to have a good right. fight here. He's got to get as active as the champion. The champion Millette seems to be in a groove. He, I'll tell you what, right? He's, he's, there's no reason for him to change anything because everything is working. Just bop, 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 bop. You know, wh wh why should he change anything? The other guy can't on, figure out what to change. No, hold right now, the champion is kind of, he's happy with the status quo because the status quo means he's winning. He's not overexerting himself. And McClendon is doing nothing to force a mistake or force to fight. Really, he, I, I don't think he understands how far behind I feel he is. Millette is winging rights and left, and they are landing. That right hook landed right on the jaw of McClendon. But the McClendon just keeps Come barreling on, forward. Three more. Well, you you got to throw something hard, and something's got to land, or else this isn't going to change. I mean, you're not going to go anywhere unless you land some hard punches. up a straight right hand with some beautiful jab. And that's just it. If you let a man just don't keep throwing, me, something's got to get through. McClendon has got to fire and make him pay. Right, step especially step when the champion misses. He doesn't seem to know what a counter punch is. I mean, he doesn't seem to know how to block and then counter punch. He just takes them all on his face. The difference in skill level is being borne out right now. You know what? I'm not even sure it's that, Steve. McClendon on, has shown all the si similar skills. Right, certainly a different style. But he's just either not conditioned as well, not hungry enough, or not focused enough to do what he needs to do. Well, I would certainly say that Millette is in a better class skill-wise because this is the first time McClendon's ever fought anybody in the top ten. His first shot at any title, he is ranked number one by the WBO, but he hasn't fought anybody. Fair enough. 
and he doesn't seem to know what the answer is. He, he doesn't seem to have a clue as to how to get up. Sit down, son. Sit down. You all right? You got to work. You got to work, son. You got him right there, but you ain't you letting this guy. You let this guy get back to the fight. You let him steal the fight. Virgil, you got to take him out. Take him out. You let him get back in the fight. You're way behind, okay? okay. You didn't give up a lot of rounds. You shouldn't have gave up. Take him out. Take him out. You gotta fight every round like it's a hey, championship you gotta, round, you man. You gotta fight hard, boy. We you gotta let, carry this home. You let him back in the fight. Right. Hey, tell you hurt, you let him off the hook. Listen, listen. Now, only thing I can take this, man. You better than this. Get him. No one said you gotta take the sick him, boy. We gotta get some of these guys. Get the bucket. An angry corner. Virgil McClendon and everything they said was true. You let him into the, you let him out of the fight. You're not fighting. You've got to get going if you want to win this fight. You've got to take rounds. You're so far behind. You need everything. Everything they said was true. I have him past the point of no return. That's the problem. Well, you know, how many times we, we, we're off by a, a round or two from the judges. I got the same thing Bobby's got. We're, we're, in, we're looking at the same fight. One guy's dominating. Which, of course, translates into the fact that McClendon probably needs a knockout to win this fight. And he only has eight knockouts in 21 wins, although he has seven in his last 11 fights. You could use a couple of knockdowns to, to really shut the gap down points-wise, but he really needs to do something, and he needs to do it now. Round number nine. Drake, come back, son. To Ron Willett, they've done a nice job with that mouse under his left eye, spoon and all. Yeah, they have done a good job in his corner. This should not be a, a difficult uh, fight. Well, not anything like the Ayala Tapia fight of the year that we saw uh, the other week, which was a toss-up. Either way would have been okay. We saw Tapia, they saw the Ayala. Hey, not this one. This is not hard to judge. This jab right now for Millet is just, it's just controlling the fight, it's controlling the pace, it's setting up everything he wants to do and negating everything that the challenger McClendon wants to do. Yeah, we probably would have been, uh, with a good straight left hand by McClendon. And he wobbled the champion, he hurt him. Out of completely nowhere, Virgil McClendon landed. Now, if he doesn't attack now, he's crazy. He's a minute and 18 seconds, got plenty of time to put him away. Uh-oh, he tripped Don't over his feet, didn't look, that didn't look good. He momentarily dazed the champion. Now he misses with a wild right hand. But Millette unable to come back with a, a stinging counterpunch. Millette should be swarming him come on, now. Pull him back. Pull him back. Because if he ever had back. a chance, it's right now. Keep working. Keep working. Fatigue pull becomes a big factor both ways, too. Come back. Come Not back. only that you can't you put out on. the energy you need, but when you get hit, it hurts so much more. And the other thing is, Bobby, he's been taking a beating uh, for seven rounds as McClendon, man. He's getting hit to the body and getting hit to the head. That's got to take a toll. You don't have all that energy when you've been beating on like that. No, it does take us, takes the starch out of you a little bit. I mean, he's on, been getting thumped. Don't hold him. Let him go. Oh. That was a heart and soul punch. That's Somebody another punch. thing that happens when uh, we fighters get tired. We will just load up with a big shot and take a little Hail Mary prayer. Come on, Clint, don't hold him. As we head for the bell in round nine. Come on, work. Boy, the way this fight began, I'm sure some surprise that it's gone this far. Time. Man, give this, man. You got to take this. You got to take this fight, Peanut. Get out there and fight no tomorrow, man. Let's go out there and fight. You got to take this. You, 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 got, you hurt him every time you give him against the ropes, and then you let him off the hook. Hey, some effective care. work from McClendon hey, as we look from the overhead. Out, work his way behind the jab. And again, he gets that left hand in, right down the middle, and he hurts the champion. You see a little buckle in the knees. He works him on the ropes. Okay. Another look. But it's so Don't little, so go. late. He maybe he won the round, one more but it's so little, so late. He has to really to jump to on the champion, Teron Millet, because he's given away so much. There's another look at it right down the middle, straight left hand. And, and on looking at a little bit of that buckle was because they stepped on each other's feet, as, as, left, as left handers do, and not because uh, the punch was so strong, but still he won the round. So it's the first time he's, he's peeked into the win column here. 
in a long, long, long time. And now he comes out showing a little more energy. Maybe he's somehow ignited a look at this wide open a little trend. What do you call that? That it's wide open position that you see the champion doing. Arms widespread. What is that? You know, there's a few fighters that I've boxed with over the years that use that type of defense and they keep their hands out here and they, they somehow they they spread the field. I don't know exactly <laughs> what you would call it, but they keep their hands out there and they look and they can pick all punches that way. And you know, for some guys, it's easy. I just assume keep mine close to my face. Well, no question. McClendon is spirited now. He's got some kind of uh, zest that he didn't have before. Round 10, both wearing black trunks, which is a mistake. The commission should take note of that before the fight starts. They should not be wearing the same color trunks. Yeah, many years ago in Madison Square Garden, you couldn't come in. One was black and one was white. Take your choice. Right, right now.